Welcome to the Elegant Oxford. We specialize and offer premium shoe shines, dyes, and artisan patinas for quality men's brands and help others to learn the art of shoe shining. Visit TheElegantOxford.com for all of your shoe care and Saphir Madai Dior needs. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Elegant Oxford. Today's video, I'm going to be shining a pair of Cornwallis in gray, but before I do that, I just want to show off this GTO Crosshatch Soul Saver that Tim's Shoe Repair added to this to this particular pair. Uh, I wanted to show that off. They were sent over for a, a quick resole job and then the Soul Saver on top with the Triumph brass toe plates. And that's just, I think, looks really cool. So these Cornwallis are gray and I realize I've actually never showcased a pair of gray shoes on this channel. And I really wanted to, to do that and show you gray wax polish and gray cream polish. If any of you have a gray shoe, maybe this is something you can can learn from. And it's a pretty unique color. I really like wearing them with dark, dark wash uh, jeans. And uh, it's a pretty cool color. Okay, so we're going to remove the shoe trees, remove the laces, and add a lasted varnished shoe tree. And that's really going to push out all those creases and really prepare the shoe for the acetone. Now, as you can see, the factory finish just looks a little tired, which is okay. It's begun to flake off a little bit, but... That's expected with years of use, but Allen Edmonds uses a spray-on opaque finish to cover imperfections, so it doesn't penetrate into the leather like alcohol dye, so it'll just flake off more readily and more apparently than, than others. That's okay, I'm just going to remove all that, get the shoe down to the base leather, and then I'm going to reapply the burnish, and then shine the shoe. And that's just going to be it, but uh, gray is a very beautiful color. I really think it's underrated and a lot of people don't include it into their wardrobe, but they should. It looks great and it can really spice up your, your look if you do it right. I actually have the new Mock 2.0 by Allen Edmonds in gray as well. It was the second pair of Allen Edmonds I ever purchased after my walnut strands and I wear it all the time. I just never really think about it, but I really do. Now the owner wanted me to match the shoes with this particular belt. It's also by Allen Edmonds. And it's, you know, like a light sharkskin gray with black burnishing around the edges. So I think that's going to be totally doable. And uh, he'll have a pair of shoes that, that match with the belt pretty closely. Now, I've actually read your comments. And for about a year now, over a year, I've been using Butol gloves when it comes to working with acetone. Butol is the only thing I found that does not immediately melt when it comes to using acetone. So they're very handy to have. And I think they really work well. So you can find them on Amazon. They're like a pack of 10 for like 20 bucks. But I've been using this one glove for the last year and it hasn't melted yet. I know this goes without saying, but just be really careful when you're using acetone. It's very powerful. It'll remove dirt, factory finish, and pretty much anything. Okay, I've seen a lot of people message me telling me they've ruined their shoes because they used acetone. And uh, I just really want to caution all those listening to not use it willy-nilly be very careful and uh, don't think just because I use it it can be done easily I know I probably make it look easy but it's, it just took a lot of trial and error as you can see it removes everything factory finish uh, pretty much anything so just be very very cautious and uh, you'll you'll get it down but it'll really strip the shoe all the way down to the bare leather and here I'm using a cotton swab to really get into those crannies and those nooks to really remove the factory finish that's embedded in there. If you need to remove old polish, use Saphir Reno Matte, which I also sell on the eleganoxford.com. Or if you need something even more gentle, use Saphir Gentle Cleaner. And that's really the bait, the most uh, gentle you can use that will remove old polish. Okay, so here's one shoe done, and then here are both shoes done. And as you can see, they're pretty much stripped down completely. They're very pale gray and they're ready for that leather dye. Since the shoes are kind of light gray, I don't want to make the burnish too dark. So I'm gonna have to dilute this black Saphir alcohol leather dye with rubbing alcohol. And that'll just kind of bring that black to a grayish look. So it's not too strong of a contrast. If you use black directly, it might look, uh, I don't want to say comical, but it, it just, it's, the, 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 it's gonna to be too stark. So you kind of want to make sure you lighten up and soften up that black. Now I'm going to be using my finger and a rag around it to just massage the darkness in 
and using my finger I can really shade it well and make sure that it looks fine. You don't want a stark black line. You want to make sure it goes darker from the tip of the toe to the to the end of the back near the vamp. You want it to be lighter there. So you have to kind of just shade it in. This does require a little bit of artistic ability, but you can just practice and, and you'll get it down eventually. And it really has to do with how much pressure you apply with your finger. So hard pressure for darker, lighter pressure for, for a lighter. I guess that's just kind of the best way to explain it. And you can rub it in in circular motions to add that burnish to the toe. And take your time, add layer by layer, let it dry, and then you can really see and check your progress. Now I'm going to be using a brush to add some burnishing to the creases here between the welt and the upper. That area can be pretty difficult, but I, I want to make sure that it's covered because I'm going to be darkening it further and burnishing it further. Now I'm switching over to the airbrush, and I really feel it just makes my job a lot easier, and it's really helpful for shading perfectly so that there's no weird areas. and. I feel like you should use the proper tools, whether it's a brush or your finger or an airbrush, and you should be totally fine. It'll just help make the shoe look the way it's supposed to look. So I shaded in those areas that needed shading that were once shaded by the factory, like the broguing line and uh, right here on the Adelaide. So I'm going to be using Saphir Cream Universal. It's a, a universal all-in-one leather conditioner you can use on jackets and couches, and it's really great for shoes as well. And as soon as I apply it, you'll see an immediate difference. It really goes into the leather and shines it right back up. And it really needs it because the leather was stripped down of everything with the acetone. So this is really a great option. It's safe for leather dye. It won't make anything run. And it shines really nicely. So it's a great option. And I recommend it for pretty much anything. You can use it on delicate leathers and on shell cordovan too if you'd like. Now that I'm editing the video, I can actually see a kind of a, a pale bluish tint to the shoe. And I think that's just from the camera because in person, the shoes don't look that blue at all. They're very pale gray and the burnishing looks black. But even my wife noticed that on video, the burnishing looks kind of like a dark navy blue, but that's just part, I guess it's a trick of the camera because it's just not. And then the Saphir here, the gray shoe polish looks green on video, but it's not green at all. It's actually gray. I guess it's just the camera playing tricks, but uh, Madai Dior gray shoe polish is one, is a color that a lot of people don't know about. And they ask me, what do I do to color in or, or to condition my gray shoes and I just recommend they look at the gray from the MDO line and it's a great option. It really has high levels of pigment, it really penetrates into the leather and it shines really really nice with just a brush. So great option and uh, if you didn't know about it now you do and if you have gray shoes you can pick some up. So don't forget to get some if you want. It's a really really great option for those with gray. All right, now here is gray wax polish, which is a, a shade that a lot of people ask me about quite often. And they wonder, is there gray? And, and there actually is. It's from the MDO line. And the only thing that's missing is purple and some of these really unique shades like olive green. Maybe I should ask Saphir if they're going to make some in the future. But this is what I'm going to use for the mirror shine. It's going to go over the burnishing and parts of the shoe. And I actually get this question all the time and I'm surprised you can't perform a mirror shine on the entire shoe only around toes or hard counter areas because if not the wax will just crack when you walk so just mirror shine the toe and not any other part of the shoe and I know I've gotten that I get that comment at least every video so I'm using rubbing alcohol and water mixed and I'm buffing the wax over and over if you need a tutorial on how to perform a mirror shine I have my ultimate 
guaranteed mirror shine tutorial that you can check out, but I really won't go into much detail here. I'm just doing the old process, adding wax, drop of water, and then buffing it with a rag, and that'll produce a very nice shine. And uh, yeah, I wish, I wish I could really just show everyone in person how to do it, but it really just, just takes practice. And if you use too much water, it's not gonna work either. You have to find the perfect middle ground between wax, water, buffing, and it just takes trial and error. All right, here's the before. Looking a little tired, looking a little old. And here is the after. I hope you like how they turned out. I'm really happy with these. They uh, look regal, and yet, at the same time, they look friendly enough to wear with pretty much anything. Gray is a really underrated color, and it really just uh, brings out the best in a lot of wardrobes if you know how to use it right. So I think the mirror shine came out really nice. So there was uh, some creasing there that didn't allow me to go all the way back, but that's okay. It happens. And then the, the crosshatch GTO, uh, GTO Soul Saver by Tim's Shoe Repair in Temecula. So I want to thank John Ferriton for his great work there. And I love the yellow stitching. It looks amazing. And the Triumph Toe Plate is always my favorite. That's just, I just love the color. So overall, very happy. It was a fun project showing you what I do daily. It's, I have so many pairs I don't make videos for, but this was just one of those jobs that I'm glad you got to see. So thanks a lot for stopping by and I will see you next time.